Hello everybody and welcome back to my second part of my Apollo 11 anniversary special. If you remember we've landed this wonderful Saturn V replica on EVE and after it has been refueled we're now gonna launch it. Yes, so the mighty vector engines uh, that I've put in the first stage have utterly destroyed the landing assembly and ISRU units. And while it ascends, let me tell you a bit about this rocket as well as about the Apollo 11 mission. This here Saturn V replica, it's almost the same that I built the first time around in the Making History expansion of Kerbal Space Program. This thing here weighs around 760 tons, fully fueled, and it has around 9000 meters per second of delta V available. So, as you have already seen, I do not use the 5F1 engines, because they would not nearly be enough to uh, get this thing off from EVE. Instead, I've replaced them with... 23 vector engines in the first stage. This was necessary to get the required thrust weight ratio to lift up from EVE's surface. And yeah. Now we've depleted our first stage and we are now on our second stage. If you remember I uh, put a Saturn V to ELU a few months back. That was also done with a fully fueled Saturn V replica because you do not need to fully fuel your Saturn V uh, model in KSP to get to the moon. Otherwise, if you fully fuel it, you cannot use the F1 replica engines because then the thrust to weight ratio would not be high enough to get it even off the launch pad. So a bit of a design flaw here in regards to development. Anyhow. We are now very high up in the atmosphere. I've decided to show you this basically unedited, so you can see how the ascent from EVE worked. I did quite a steep ascent to uh, get out of the thickest parts of the atmosphere quickly, and then flatten out really late to, uh, yeah, do not generate too much drag. We are now doing exactly that, flattening out our trajectory. And hopefully getting out of the atmosphere and getting a fine orbit around EVE. As you can see the crew of three are happy as can be because they're Kerbals, they are oblivious to danger. Unlike the brave astronauts that flew to the moon, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins of course. They've spent eight days on the Apollo 11 mission. My Kerbals, they are now, I think, more than one or two years into their mission because it took some time to get to EVE and then it took almost a year or so until a nice transfer window opened back to Kerbin. And also they had to uh, generate the resources from EVE's soil to refill the massive rocket, which consists of around 110 parts when it was complete. But now we are on our third stage and therefore yeah we're not really that complete anymore are we? So anyhow as I mentioned before uh, three human beings were sent to the moon on with Apollo 11 on July 16th which coincided also with the launch of this beast here. And they landed on the moon on July 20th at 20 o'clock and 18 minutes UTC in the year 1969. And the mission ended when they went back to Earth or rather splashed down in the oceans of Earth on July 24th. So we have now performed our successful ascent and we're going to plan our circularization burn. There we go. 
could have been a bit more efficient to be honest that ascent but yeah i think it works out and we have enough delta v left to get back to kerbin and yeah if you remember that uh, historic speech of president kennedy then yeah the goal was not only send a man to the moon but also get him or her but back then it was him mostly back safely to earth and yes, they and I do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We all love a challenge, don't we? Okay, our three J2 engines are now burning. And yes, this looks quite well. Look at that, the crew is completely relaxed and we have one final glimpse at that purple pane of a planet called Eve. Well, it is quite a fascinating planet, to be honest, and it was fun to explore it back in the day when I did my purple pane Eve exploration mission. But I do not think I'm going to revisit that anytime soon. Okay, our maneuver back to Earth, uh, Earth, Kerbin rather, is planned. And we're gonna get yeah, it's a bit of a steep encounter, but it's going to work out fine, I guess. Alright, time to get to the maneuver point, and then of course blast this thing off and away from Eve. And yeah, the one big difference between my mission here and the mission of Apollo 11 was that I forgot to include an option for the Kerbals to, <laughs> to leave the Saturn V rocket and gather some samples from EVE, because, yeah, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, they collected 21.5 uh, kilograms of lunar material for study back on Earth, and Jebediah, Bob and Bill, they basically just chilled in their capsule for a year. So yeah, maybe not that uh, much sense of a mission this did make. But that was not the point, the point was not exploration, the point was to prove a point. And the point was to get a Saturn V to EVE and get the crew back to Kerbin safely. I almost said Earth again. Now, there's an interesting tidbit here, because when I uh, started to do my maneuver for flattening out my orbit around Kerbin, I realized, hey, I could possibly get a moon encounter. And wouldn't it be nice for the Apollo 11 anniversary to also go to the moon, even if it was just the moon in uh, Kerbal Space Program. And not even in Realism Overhaul, because believe me, getting to the moon in Realism Overhaul is a lot harder. I have to admit, I have not even managed to do that yet. So yeah, we get a moon encounter and we have enough delta V to make our mooner flyby. Or even maybe get into orbit around moon. I'm pretty sure we, we do not have enough resources or enough fuel rather left to uh, perform landing and return. I mean, we could try landing, but the point was to get these poor three Kerbals back to Kerbin uh, after they spent so much time in space. So. Let's just do a final victory lap around the moon. And once we have done that, we can finally get back to Kerbin and celebrate this massive achievement. Because yeah, I really do think that uh, the moon landing that the humans performed 49 years ago was one of the greatest achievements that we as a species ever accomplished. Even if it was... To be honest, basically just some national pride to poke the Russians and tell them, look at us, we're better than you. Okay, look at that. We're now getting a beautiful Kerbin rise now. Yeah, this reminds me of the uh, historic picture that the astronauts of Apollo 8 took when they did their uh, orbit around the moon and photographed the Earth as it came uh, up across the horizon of the moon. Actually, this is also... I think the anniversary for that is this year sometime. And I think it's... yeah, it must be the 50th anniversary of that, so... Yeah, also something to look forward to. 
quite an interesting year this year. We have the 50th anniversary of 2001 A Space Odyssey, and we have the 50th anniversary of those uh, moon pictures, uh, Earthrise pictures rather. And next year, of course, we will have the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. And yeah, I mean, if I've already sent a Saturn V to Elu and to uh, Eve, I'm not sure what I should do for next year. I really have to think about something really special, because the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 deserves something special. What I did here, if you have noticed, is move the capsule a bit out of the way of the service module debris. Why? Because on re-entry it can happen that the service module is generating more drag and then crashing into your little capsule. And we do not want that, do we? Okay, this is now basically almost the final part of the mission. We are now on a safe trajectory and we're even landing in the oceans as the three astronauts of Apollo 11 did. And why did he send and contemplate whether or not their journey made any sense? We can once again remember those that came before us and those who did great things in the past and can only hope that we once again as a species will achieve something similar or even greater in the future. And in that vein, once again, I thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this and enjoy what I do on YouTube, then I would ask you to subscribe, leave a like and maybe hit the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching. Goodbye.